terrible. Well, you know what? It just seems appropriate that we start with uh, this cutie since it's Mother's Day weekend. Yeah. Look at this cute little flower. <laughs> it's a weave. It's a weave. Do you, do you have a stage name? Normala. Normala? <laughs> okay, well, anyway, so where are we guys? What are we doing? We are in the front of our Madison store at the Purple Painted Lady. Yes. And what are we doing here? We are showing you how to transform a piece that you already have, maybe something that's similar to this, with chalk paint by Annie Sloan, kind of adding a little bit here and there to maybe jazz it up. So we're going to show you, I think, two different techniques. I'm this piece has a lot of jazz already, if you yeah. ask me. It's got a lot of jazz. We're so going to tone down something the Something that's not so much your style, but you like certain aspects of it, how to make it work. Designers, make it work. <laughs> Okay, so yeah, this was a this is a neat piece. It's been in the shop way too long and truth be told, truth be told, actually isn't she cute? I can't like not focus on her. Okay, so truth be told, this piece has been in our Macedon shop just way too long. Mm -hmm. And although the front of it is not quite as cute as the baby, um, the sides have this interesting texture and it is really pretty. But I feel like either one or the other should go. Yes. And since the front is kind of cool, we thought we would keep that the drawers the same. And what color are we thinking of painting the uh, the exterior, the whole outside of the body of the dresser? We're gonna use Abusan blue. Okay. Yay. Should pull her over into the video. Um, and unfortunately, we're up in front, so you guys have to just be a little project a bit. Yeah. So, yep. um, Tammy and Marianne and. Uh, <laughs> Well, and uh, 11 visitors are on. Leave us a message. Let us know what you're doing for Mother's Day. Um, tell us what you would do if you were able to get a gift certificate from the purple painted lady. Did you drop your little keys? Can you tell we were short a babysitter? Or can you tell who actually makes the decisions around here? <laughs> okay, so I'm going to pass this back to you guys. And just so you know, if you want to somehow yeah. you know I get back together gonna go first on that side so we're mm -hmm. gonna shift it around a little bit okay and Courtney's gonna be doing more of like a dry brush effect yeah so okay solid coverage okay very cool so um using Abusan blue which then is a really pretty color mm-hmm actually it's kind of coming through a little dark I think yeah. just the way I have it yeah. um yeah that's better so it's kind of a blue green mm -hmm. don't yeah. you think it's really pretty there we can just get it in there okay very cool what do you got to share about doing a dry brush what yes talk about? so dry brush is a really easy way to add a little bit of texture to something without using too much paint so um, what you do is you take a brush we're gonna show you on multiple different brushes how to do this you're gonna put it in your paint and you're also gonna wipe off a ton of the excess do you so, need shop towels or anything you do not how those so ladies? Oh, they went out the back door. Okay. So I okay. teleported. She's fine. So um, you have a few brushes. Can you just show me the brushes and tell yes. me what they are before so, we do painting? I have the Annie Sloan Small Dome Top Brush. And now it says small, but it's really a really great size I brush. I like this brush. That's like a two-inch wide head on the top, yep. right? Yep. And it even spreads out. So as you're using it, it spreads out quite a bit. So okay. So you're so these are different options, and you'll show the technique based on mm -hmm. them. Okay. And then we also have Annie Sloan's large flat brush. So this one is great for if you want to do more of a smoother finish. Um, this lays the paint really nicely. The difference um, between that brush and the uh, the difference between the blue bristles and the other color bristles. What yes. Is it? So this is a blend of synthetic and natural, um, and they're all at differing uh, lengths. So they actually lay the paint really well. It is a little wet from yesterday. I used it okay. yesterday, but um, and then as you can tell, yeah, one's so, a bit bushier than the other. <laughs> okay. So depending on what you're doing a wash on, like if you're doing a wash on um, bricks mm -hmm. that have a lot of nooks and crannies, you might prefer the Annie Sloan Strucker keys again. There, cute. She's good in there. She's fine. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and then you have an inexpensive... My favorite brush. <laughs> the chip brush. Okay. Um, which is a really inexpensive couple bark brush. Okay. It's really nothing special. Okay. Nothing special. Um, we're going to just do the sides and the top so that way we don't have to worry about taking the drawers out. For sure. 
So I'm gonna use the Annie Sloan small dome top first so you guys can see. I got a little bit of paint on my brush, not too much. And Do you then, need something to wipe it off on? Nope, I'm gonna wipe it right on the edge of the container. And I do this a couple times. You can offload onto a paper towel before you go ahead and do the dry brush technique, but I just wipe it off on the side. Okay. And then just using a really light touch, you're just gonna feather it on. And you always want to be very conscientious of your brush strokes, I think, yep. in this direction. And also, sometimes maybe you're starting maybe from the top, start from the bottom, so that way you kind of alternate where you leave the heaviness behind. Yep. For sure. Cool. Okay. So that's interesting. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's okay. see if there's any difference using the other brushes. And then on the other side, what were we thinking we were going to do? Just a solid coat. Okay. And that's probably what we'll do over the whole yeah. exterior. We just wanted to showcase what dry yeah. brushing was. Yeah. What do you think? You do you like dry brushing? What are your thoughts? What are your thoughts? Oh, she <laughs> loves <laughs> phones. <laughs> she loves to she chew likes on phones. the phones. So since it's Mother's Day weekend, we thought we'd bring in a special <laughs> guest to help with our dry brush. Oh, <laughs> All right. So I did the same thing with the flat brush, dipped it in the paint, and scraped off excess. And then I'm gonna come in. I will say for something like this, the flat brush is a lot easier to get up into the area and then pull down. Okay. Because the dome top obviously doesn't have that chiseled edge. So if you leave too much on, if you didn't want to do that, you would just take a rag and just go over oh, it. Oh yeah, wipe it right off. Okay, yeah. we're not not too worried about it as much. I kind of feel like when you're doing a dry brush, you always want to offload your brush on a... I use a paper towel. Yeah. Yeah, I would do a Scott shop towel or something like that, yeah. And it also depends on how heavy you want it, obviously. Just because it's coming through a little bit. Not quite as good. So they actually, when you're doing the dry brush, although it didn't get in there as well, the Annie Sloan Dome Top 2795, well, whatever. I oh, yeah. For it, that brush actually, that almost looks like a wash it, the way it, it was. It blends it really well. It's almost like a uh, blush brush that you yeah. use for makeup. Like, it blends the colors really well. Oh, yeah. So She agrees. That. <laughs> you agree? No. Okay, so now you got the chip brush. I have the chip brush. So this I have found, because I use it on... One of the pieces that's over there, actually. These are in our stores and on our website. Yeah. It's just named a chip brush. They're very, I think, very inexpensive brushes. They're not, like, the highest quality. You're, you are going to lose more bristles, and they're not yeah. meant to be used for the, you know, the yeah, next 10 no. years. But It's like a couple project uh, brush and then toss it. Or you can even use it if you make a dark wax glaze or something, yeah. right? We've used, we, we use often, it for paint. and Yeah, we, we often have tell them. Yes. I think because it's so, the brush itself is so textured, it gives the nice variegated brush strokes that you're looking for yeah. and some of those textured finishes. This is actually, it's a great brush for something like shellac. Because you don't want to use a, a high-end brush with shellac because shellac will stay on the bristles and really toughen yeah, the bristles. Yeah, something you're going to toss. Yeah, but we have found that actually if you use this with shellac, let it dry, and then go back in the shellac, it actually rejuvenates itself in the brush and you can actually use the brush again. So if you just want to keep one brush for shellac. There you go. Let's say you already, this was something that this piece hypothetically was done with paint and you waxed it. Could you be doing this right over wax? Uh, yes. If the I wax would, is cured. Yeah, I would say it depends on how long ago you waxed it. If you waxed it, I don't know, like two months ago, go for it. If you waxed it yesterday, I would clean it a little bit first to remove some of that uncured wax. Even depending too on how thick you apply the yes. wax. For sure. Hmm. So this one you kind of get a bit more of a wiry texture I feel. like You can actually see brush strokes in here whereas this it leaves it heavy and just really thin I strokes. think it's you know this piece in itself has a lot of texture to it already because yeah. of that yeah. prefab surface. Yeah. I feel like it's probably not coming through through the phone or the video yeah. very well. But it is interesting because I do like how on this bottom, yep. that blue is blending with it. But I tell you what, instead of turning it around, why don't we just go ahead and paint the opaque solid cover on this side because yeah. I don't particularly actually like the dry brush. Yeah. Sure. Did you actually, paint it? She doesn't like the, the whole dry brush, right? Right? Can you say What'd yes? What do you think, girl? What do you think? What do you think? Uh, She's like, I she's want the phone. Okay, so Shiny. why don't we do that? Why don't you go yeah. ahead and paint over? I don't know if you guys want to take turns or who's doing what, do you but want to I'll put her back in baby jail. Put her in baby jail. <laughs> there you go. Here we go, girl. Let's give her the paintbrush and see how yeah. exciting things get. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> Pam was wondering, could you achieve a similar uh, look or? 
Can you achieve? It's okay. You can go ahead. Achieve the same crusty look using salt wash yeah. or sawdust. Yes. I think you could definitely do that probably Hon with Fleur. either. On floors, the base, maybe like French lemon or something. Yeah. So, yes. Yeah. Honestly, you could try either of those products. Yep. Sometimes people will leave the chalk paint out for an yeah. extended period of time, right? To let and make it. it... In. Yes, that's what we actually had a piece. It sold, so we don't have it anymore. But we actually left the chalk paint out. We had a base coat of a. I don't remember what, exactly. I think it was duck egg. And we left Chateau Grey out on a plate and took newspaper and crumpled it up and put it in the Chateau Grey and then blotted it on. Do you remember that? It's called Fortage. Fortage. Yes, I do. I and do that kind of creates a similar. Who did that though? Did you do that piece? That was my yeah. first piece I ever did with you. Yeah, yeah, I'm like that was a while ago. It was a long time ago. <laughs> okay, easy. let's see how this goes with okay. the actual albusan, and then afterwards we'll take the drawers out, um, paint the whole thing, and we'll put a picture on there or something. Yeah. I, so this is my favorite brush, especially with the new global formula of chalk paint. I just feel like. It really helps you not get the kind of pilling texture that a lot of people are experiencing. So what I do is just get a really good amount of paint on my brush, really dunk it in there. And you're not trying, if you hear the brush dragging like that, you don't have enough paint on your brush. So like that noise. It's like Velcro. I just like to have a really good amount and the paint really levels itself out. So. I'm going to go about to there, and then I'm really going to go back and get some more paint. Cause I do. Now, this paint in the surface may look a bit like pilled or texture because of you are painting over yeah. a previous surface that does yeah. have texture. Definitely. Mm -hmm. What are you thinking about this color? should be interesting. I think we're going to need to do a brown or a black wax. Yeah, I think black. So if you guys have questions out there, let us know. Linda's saying she likes to use that chip brush for dark wax. Yeah. Chip brush yeah. is great for uh, dark wax glazes. Yeah. So I think the Albusan on here is, is good, but definitely is going to need maybe the dark wax. Or we could have mixed Albusan and maybe Amsterdam green to get an interesting color too. Yeah. Well, this is just our first coat, so maybe next coat. I am paying attention to you. Let's see. <laughs> <laughs> I got it. Okay, and then I'll just show you guys with the small round brush as well. Same concept though, I'm just going to get a good amount of paint on the brush. And this one almost acts like a ballpoint pen where you're not going to have to go back to the container as much because it does soak up and hold a good amount of paint. Oh yeah, that seems to go on a lot easier on this surface. Yeah. I, I feel like you're not really working as hard. Yeah. So the, the global paint is a bit thicker, but the coverage, especially with, I think the colors, covers so much it better. It covers better. That's quite interesting. I think um, Abusan has covered pretty well across the board. Yeah. Court, do you want to sneak through and maybe go grab one of the new color charts and then also maybe the new lacquers? We have the new lacquer out. Yep. Oh, good. Okay. What do you do think, we have the, Afterwards, the new, like the gloss lacquer over there. Oh, you already got yeah. it. I'm so sorry, Don. I even videoed that too. Before. So, how was the original finish done, Patty? Great question. I have no clue because I bought this from like a company that sells, you know, finished pieces. Um, personally, how would you approach to replicate that? I mean, I, I have an do, idea. I would do. I would mix Han Fleur with salt wash as my base coat and really stipple it on to get the texture underneath. Yeah, and that's, and then yeah, that's interesting. Okay, I would do like French linen, maybe even tone down a little bit as the top coat and sand a little bit. So the you could even go with some modern masters and yeah. do a rust effect. This almost looks like a uh, copper. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but and actually you could do create that using you modern can masters. Mix, uh, salt yeah. the, our um, sawdust with paint too, and just kind of. And I was just watching one of um, Annie Sloan's videos last night where she talked about her flat brushes creating a smooth finish and um, this is the small flat brush the one inch yep one inch wide um, and then this is really nice for these areas up here where it's not such a thick surface and you're just trying to get something like that or around drawer fronts or something like that right here but you still want that smooth finish so hmm. that's all our different types. I, I gotta tell you I it, it's a really nice piece but the sides and the top, based on the amount of time we've had it, it just seems like 
too much going on. A little bit too much going on, at least for the demographics of where we are. Yeah. Yeah. Depending upon, I, I could see this selling in like, I don't know, in a French Quarter in New Orleans or something. You know what I mean? But yeah. not so much here. Um, yeah, so Kimberly, we did buy the piece. Uh, I didn't have intentions on repainting it. It's just... We decided that it's been here long enough and it was a little too crazy with the texture and the uh, decoupage front. So I thought we, I, don't, I wouldn't say jazz it up because we're going to tone it down a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah. Based, <laughs> on, based on being in the Northeast, I think people up here, yeah. are, some of them are just a little bit more traditional. Yeah. Um, so that's the direction we're going to head. And if you own a store, you always want to know your customer base. And Tanya says she did a library table last week. Mm -hmm. um, she says she's, uh, I have it, and it has clear wax on it, but I feel it needs something extra but can't decide. She already has wax on it. You could always try a tinted wax. So depending on how much texture you have, how much, how many, um, how much architectural detail you have, you could always try and add dark wax, black wax, white wax. You could add it just in the crevices. You could add it all over. You could make blades. You could do a lot of different things. So I would say if you were able to send us a picture, of your piece, we can even give you some suggestions on how to jazz it up a bit. How best? What's the best way for them to reach us? If you send us a message through our Facebook page, that is the I think that's the quickest way to get a response. Unless you wanted to call us, but then we can't see your picture. Yeah. Right, right. So this is kind of interesting. It's kind of like the dry brush with this round brush, but a little bit heavier, just with some of that coming through. So kind of a mix between mm -hmm. the two textures or two finishes that we were doing. Yeah. So if we had. Oh, and actually, it kind of you keep spreading it. It wears some of it off and moves yeah. it over. So yeah, yeah. I do. You can see how it has the texture there. And actually, Courtney, you were suggesting like different options and using sawdust sprinkled into one of your base coats and yeah. painting over it For sure. will absolutely create that effect. So if somebody was like totally interested in that, yeah, easy way to achieve it, yeah. right? Yeah. So okay, very cool. Um, so I think we just have a few things to talk about. Let's just see. I got a couple questions. Oh, so um, somebody asked, "What's Annie going to be doing?" Uh, Annie Sloan's going to be doing at our festival. So we didn't actually announce that again, but yeah. So, so Annie Sloan is going to be at our September 2019 festival. I'm going to go a postcard here. Good idea. It's September 21st through the 22nd. So she's going to come. She's going to be doing some demos. She's going to be doing some book signings. She'll be there hanging out with us. So. We're very excited to have her. Yes. So, if you want to meet Annie, stop on by. And she'll be there too. We got, but... we got Annie. I know. If you want to meet Nora, she's gonna be there too. Just look for the baby with the purple onesie. Yes. yes. We're gonna get her. Time. Very cool. So, what else do we have to talk about? Um. So we did want to uh, touch briefly on the lacquers. So, if you bought lacquer from us before. We only had a matte lacquer, which looked like this. In a liter container. In a liter container. And now we're going to have these, which one is a matte, so that's the one you guys are probably used to. And then there is a gloss finish, so you can get a gloss finish yeah. on your floor. So it's great. I think it's important to mention we do still have all three listed yes. on our website. So the leader, the previous formula, could not be used outdoors. It was for indoor yes. use only. And now, with the introduction of the new lacquers, they are for both interior and exterior. Yeah. So be sure you pay attention to the size if you are ordering online. Yeah, and check Definitely out read the, the description. description. Yeah, the description, because questions. gloss is a big deal, and if you're looking for something more contemporary, yeah. that is yeah. now a perfect option. It has UV protection. They're rated yes. choice safe. Yeah. So, you know. So please, if you have questions about any of that, Call us, text us, ask us questions. And on our website this morning, there's a new blog post mm -hmm. about the lacquer. So they should check that out. That yep. would be a great thing to do. So We also want to touch on some changes mm. that are happening. So this we have exciting. new color charts, which are fantastic. So these will be transitioning in very soon. So what it is, is it's actually all of the colors. Ooh. Are on this yeah are on one sheet. All the neutrals are up at the top, and the colors are in her nice little format. Oh. The new ones actually have the Charleston Trio at the bottom, which we did not have in the old ones. So we actually have those in there, which is fantastic. We had a customer earlier today asking about the difference between uh, Tilton, yeah, 
and Arl. Okay. So Tilton is more of a, like a bright sunflower yellow, where I think Arl is more closer to an orange. Yeah, I do. It's more closer to like a an not, English not yellow. Peachy, You've always described her as like a chartreuse. It once I felt it kind of was, but it's really kind of like a daffodil. It's kind of like a, yeah, yeah. Yep. And I like how she has them arranged. It's not quite a circle. She does it in a pyramid. Yeah. yeah. But it is like a color I, wheel. And I don't know why. I like these little color swatches she has going on. Yeah. Really so cool. just to give you an idea about mixing. Yep. Um, so and that's then, pretty awesome. And then the neutrals are on top. And yep. then this is cool. And like, then you have a little insert that's going to match up over top of the colors, which are going to tell you her inspiration behind each one. So this it's a piece of vellum, right? Yeah. Is yeah. that how you say it? Yeah. I always say Valium. <laughs> it's not Valium. <laughs> I just and, like to call it a transparent insert. I like, it's a transparent insert. It's a little piece of plastic. <laughs> Almost like <laughs> wax paper. <laughs> that goes over them and it just tells you how she came up with each color and a little bit of a brief description. Of okay, it. and these color charts, we have to update our photo, I think. Yeah. Yep. But these are on, available on our website too, right? Yes. And in all our stores. Yep. So they're very cool. Let's just see if we have some more comments or questions. Mm -hmm. um, someone started painting with a spray gun. Okay. Um, but one question I need, something to finish it. Protect that will not be smelly like the lacquer. I would use the wax. I mean, the or wax it has a little bit of a scent as well. I feel like anything while you're applying it will have a bit of a scent as far as top coats, but as yeah. soon as it's dried, you shouldn't have any anything lingering. Um, I know that clear top coat sealer is a little less. Clear top coat sealer. Of, um, yeah, ours in the hands was clear top coat sealer. I've used it in a closed garage. I, there wasn't much of a scent to it. Maybe a little bit, but really not a lot. The only thing I don't know is, and she said sprayer. So I don't know. Are you know wanting if, to spray you the wanting, top yeah. coat? Yeah, so I'm getting the impression she may want to spray it. And that I don't know if you can actually put that through the spray. In fact, I'm pretty confident you're not supposed to, yeah. but we'll check and we can respond back to your post on that. Yeah. Either that or send us a, a Facebook message with your project pictures and what you've done so far, and maybe we can look into it a little bit deeper for you. Okay, so Michelle wants to know, she's going to be painting some metal furniture on her covered porch. Okay. Um, she was asking, like, what finish should she use? You can lacquer. use the new lacquer. Yeah, absolutely. It's meant for yeah. outside. This so, would be perfect. Either matte or gloss. You have a couple different options now. Mm -hmm. um, I think if you're doing something outside that's like a concrete floor, maybe lacquer isn't necessary. Um, but on something like furniture or Metal. something that is, uh, we talked about yesterday, pressure seal or pressure treated wood. Pressure treated wood. You have to be careful so. before you paint that. Yeah. Um, you know, the tips, the, the tip sheet for the lacquer that's on our website mm -hmm. and it's on our shopping cart as an image for each of those products. Yes. It provides a significant amount of information. Right. They're also included in our on our website if you just search for lacquer yeah. on our blog. We have a blog and we have a shopping cart. And on the blog, there's a lot of information. I'm been around since. Hi, it's me. Um, on our blog, we have a lot of information, like technical detail information about the products. And we have um, the tips sheet from Annie, but then we expanded on that from our usage of it. So you can use the Annie Sloan lacquer over concrete in your home if you have your basement or a mudroom or wherever. Um, and this is like a game changer for us. It's an exciting thing. Um, and especially because now we have multiple sheens or options at least. Annie puts in the tip, the tip sheet. She actually wrote that you could even do, um, I think, a couple of the gloss and then the matte over it because they, the gloss seems to be a little bit more robust for protection. Um, so t take a peek at that tip sheet because it'll be, it's very helpful. So I'm going to... I'm going to switch this around. Happy Mother's Day to all the moms out there. I just want to tell you that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. <laughs> Are you going to eat your shoe? She has two brand new teeth coming in. Yeah. So she's teething. Oh, my God. Yay. You're going you're gonna to be walking very soon. Yeah. It's going to be scary. It's <laughs> too crazy. Um, what else do we want to share? Anything else? Um, I think that's it, but if you guys have any questions or maybe you jumped in the middle of the live, make sure you can, after this is over, you can hop back to the beginning and watch it from then. Couple quick questions. Yes. 
how do we get this new color chart? Uh, how do we get this new color chart? It's on our shopping cart. So just visit visit shop.thepurplepaintedlady.com. If you're in the area, you can also stop at our stores. Yep, we so we have the new color charts. Yeah. They're available. Same price as always. Yeah. Um, I think they're $1.50. We pretty much pretty much sell them for what we purchased them for. Mm -hmm. And then um, let's just see here. Uh, Charleston Trio, just yeah. really quick. What is the Charleston Trio? The Charleston Trio is a set of three colors that Amy has added to her suite. So it comes with Rodmel, which is like a, an egg. And like an yeah. aubergine color. Yeah, aubergine yeah. color. I forget that word. This is a zesty um, green. Yes, furl, which is absolutely gorgeous. And then we have Tilton, which is more of like a sunflower, a true sunflower yellow. Yeah. And they're inspired by the Charleston group, a group yeah. of artists and, group of artists, uh, and writers and yeah. art critics. So if you. Um, There's actually a book. Oh, yeah. go ahead. Go ahead. I'm going to grab it. I'm going to flip. Go, go ahead. If we. Um, we just have as a little deal on our website, if you're purchasing one of each liter of the Charleston colors, we always throw in one of these Charleston books for free. So it's a nice little bonus. Gives you the inspirations. <laughs> Yay. She Yay. might chew on it. So, so if they purchase a liter of the trio, yep. the so, Rodmel, um, Tilton, yep. and Furl. You get the book for free. You get free. the book for free. And it kind of talks a little bit about her inspiration for the colors and where she found the colors um, and all that fun yeah. detail. So we just posted um, this morning mm -hmm. a mixing video on our Facebook page and Instagram of Furl. Yes. And I shared more information about the Charleston group mm -hmm. and about the house that they had um, and that it's open for visitors yep. about... 10 months out of the year and how I'd love to go see that so yeah. and then Courtney I don't want you to mess that up back there but you also brought that book of zine over yeah do we want to just mention that again because sure. that is one of the Charleston colors so we do have the new issue of the colorist issue number two we do still have issue number one and we but, always will yeah and we always will sure. but this is featuring obviously Tilton can you show me the spine on that yeah so you got a little drip down here Yep, so these are really meant to be like a collection. Almost like when I was a kid, my parents had like National Geographic lined yeah, up on yeah. a bookshelf. Encyclopedias. Yeah, Encyclopedias. Yeah, yeah. And then I'm assuming, because there's what, over, was there 40 colors? There's could be, wait, that's that's the next 10 years. Annie better get busy. Oh, man. Oh, man. It's going to be crazy. And these are quarterly-ish. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I'm pretty sure we, we post about them when they come in. Yeah, when the new one comes And then in. if you want to be reminded about something like that, or if you want to get a text reminder for when our Facebook Lives are starting. We have a text alert system. So if you text the number 74121, the word chalk paint, you will be issued into our text alert system. We'll let you know 10 minutes before we go live um, that we are going live and usually a little bit about the topic. Um, also, we use this to let you guys know of any big announcements or anything that's going on in the shop that we think you really should know immediately. So if you want the inside scoop of what's going on, this is the way to do that. You can always um, opt out by texting the word stop. Cool, cool. So people have been posting other questions. We'll, I'll go back, you'll go back. Yeah. Because they're very specific about the lacquer, cutting kind of yellow over light colors, sure. chalk paint on walls, um, all that good stuff. And um, if you're enjoying having the baby, give us a thumbs up or a little heart for her. Because <laughs> it is Mother's Day weekend. Um, what's going on next weekend? Next weekend on Friday, we're going to do an, um, a Facebook Live about the Iron Orchid Designs. What? could happen to your a uh, transfer and how to potentially fix that so um, especially if you've had issues with transfers or you've had something that we've helped you with leave it in the comments below so we can address it in the next Facebook live sure. but while we're talking about that she oh said, my I goodness. Wanna watch it she's now. excited um, we're gonna be applying a transfer to the Victrola that you saw in not last week but the week before that Facebook Live, we are painting it. So we're gonna be finishing awesome. that off in the next Facebook Live. Awesome. Okay. Anything you guys wanna say? Nora has Happy a lot Mother's to say. Day. Happy, Happy Mother's, Mother's Day. Day. Bye everybody. Bye. Yeah.